Well, let's get to the position where it all starts on offense, and that is the quarterback. Last year, Braylon Braxton started game one of the Kevin Wilson era, but threw two, two interceptions in his first four attempts before leaving with an ankle injury. In comes redshirt freshman Cardell Williams. He ends up throwing for three TDs and running for another. Later on, he ends up hurting his shoulder in a 33-26 overtime loss to Charlotte. Then we got to see Kirk Francis for the next three and a half games. With Braylon Braxton transferring to Marshall, how did the quarterback uh, room look this spring? You know, it, so Cardell has been nursing a shoulder injury, and there were a couple things he was able to do during the spring, but we didn't see him in any of the scrimmage portions. So you had two local kids and two former walk-ons, uh, Stephen Kittleman, back up from Jenks, Oklahoma, still a walk-on. Kirk Francis has now been put on scholarship, and really he gave the team at the end of last season – the most consistent quarterback play they got from anybody all year long. Uh, none of us, even having watched his really prolific career at Metro Christian here in Tulsa, none of us expected that from him, certainly this soon. I mean, frankly, anytime a walk-on quarterback, a local walk-on comes on, you're just hoping that he makes an impact of any kind at any point, you know, over the course of four years. To see the guy starting games in year one, is pretty wild. It speaks to the fact that, one, he's got two things going for him. He's a pretty accurate passer, and I think that he processes things pretty well. He came up in a high school program where they throw the ball a ton. I think he understands the concepts, knows where you know his eyes need to be, and um, he was ready to go when his number was called. And it maybe didn't play a, a better game uh, than, than the two-lane ball game where he throws for 345 yards against a really good defense. They were missing some key people, but – TU's offense performed much better than expected on that day. And then the rest of the way, they were relatively consistent in their ability to move the ball and at least score some points. So Kirk Francis uh, was the guy throughout spring, without question, took all of the number one reps. I think he's improved some. Uh, you know, he's he's on the small side, as you might expect from a walk-on. But I think the arm strength, even in just the few weeks uh, of the offseason and into spring, uh, I think I saw some improvement there. He remains a guy who's pretty accurate. And I think is awfully reliable. Cardell certainly, I think, gives you a higher ceiling. And when he was good, he was really good last season. But so much of the time, he looked like a freshman quarterback. And, you know, his eyes were about that big at different times. And granted, not everything was perfect around him. And the, the position was just a bit of a mess from the start. You mentioned Braylon and the injury. And we all had anointed him as QB1. And he did have a lot of those leadership qualities and the body of work. Um, you know, playing four or five games in 2022 uh, was pretty good. Uh, certainly, it looked like a guy who was able to give you the run and pass element and uh, had great size and uh, good leadership qualities. And so we all assumed he was going to be the guy. And when he's done in the first series and never is able to get back um, and show anything like what he had in 2022, they ended up starting Roman Fuller for a game, and I think he threw five interceptions against uh, Oklahoma. Uh, they started Cardell. They started Kirk. So to start four different quarterbacks, um, that is, it, it's such a far cry from what Kevin Wilson had gotten used to, right, with Justin Fields, uh, you know, and, and some of the best quarterbacks in, that not only have played in college football, but, you know, now at the next level, some of, some of the very best guys. And so not what he was expecting, no question, uh, he made the best of what he could with that hand. And and as we go forward here, you know, they've just brought in a, a transfer from Utah State who started, I believe, 15 games. Cooper Lega, who threw, I think, 18 or 19 touchdown passes last year. So that's a guy who I think immediately is going to be in the mix as a starter. Kevin Wilson has said multiple times, look, we're a 4-18. and 18. Nobody is the anointed QB1 here at, at this moment. You're going to have to fight for this. And so I like Kirk Francis's chances because he knows the, the offense better probably than anybody around him. Uh, he's got that accuracy. I think the, the ability to make decisions and process is good. I also like Cardell's chances because I happen to think his ceiling is probably higher than the three guys we're talking about. And just based on his track record, I, I think Lega has a shot. So Point being, I, I've talked for a while now. I have no idea who's going to roll out as the starter uh, for week one um, in August. It, it's completely up in the air, and I think that's not a bad thing based on what happened last year. These guys should uh, need to respond to competition in a good way. And then, so we'll see. We'll see who emerges from that fire uh, refined the most. Can you tell us a little bit about how uh, Cardell's shoulder uh, injury you know, recovery is coming along? 
everything I've heard is that it was on schedule. And the fact that he was able to do some things in the spring was a really good sign. So I, I assume he's good to go. Um, when he's right, and gosh, he was just so skinny, but when he's right, uh, he's a guy that gives you everything you want in terms of, uh, one, I, he wants to throw the ball down the field, has a pretty strong arm. Um, when he's on, he's incredibly accurate, you know, against Pine Bluff, I think maybe through one incomplete pass. And then there were a game or two down the line where when he was on, he doesn't miss. When he's off, he misses a whole lot. And so obviously that need, he needs to become a much more consistent passer for this to be his job. But he's he's got the talent that if he is able to bring it together, you would feel really good about Cardell Williams being QB1 at TU. And then Lega, you know, a guy that was brought in, you know, just really a few days ago, a couple weeks ago, I'm very interested to, to see what the buzz is about this guy. Like, is this a guy that they brought in thinking he's likely to win this job? Um, or is this a guy that you brought in just kind of hoping? Um, you know, I'd, I'll be interested to see. What can you tell us about uh, freshman quarterback Tim Carpenter? He is, according to the recruiting services, probably uh, the number one recruit in this class of 2024, which was the best that TU assigned in, let's call it the rivals or 24-7 or on three era. You know, since people started tracking recruiting like this on the internet, this is the best class they've signed. We can talk about the reasons for that a little bit later, but um, Kevin Wilson and his staff really went to work. And, you know, he's kind of a mid to high three-star prospect, which TU doesn't get very many of those guys who had been committed to Indiana. So a Big Ten school from the Dayton, Ohio area. Big kid, I think 6'3 or 6'4. Um, good size. I, I, I think probably a little bit raw. But, you know, when I talk about Cardell having the highest ceiling, I'm talking about those top three guys that have some experience. Carpenter might have the highest ceiling of anybody in that room. And so you wouldn't necessarily want to count him out, right? If he's the guy who can go out there, especially with an offensive line that's got some moving parts, if if you need a quarterback to make plays, he might be the guy to do that um, with his legs, uh, you know, and his arms. So um, it, the the buzz is good, uh, but I, obviously I think uh, Kevin Wilson would like to go with a quarterback with more experience for the time being. So let's talk about the running game. The Hurricanes lose Jordan Ford, but bring back their top – Two rushers from 2023, and Anthony Watkins and Bill Jackson. How did that room look this spring? It looks good because, you know, Watkins and Jackson were both in the mix and played in that spring showcase. Both uh, made a couple of plays. Jackson especially got loose for a couple of nice ones. Both of those guys had good moments down the stretch. Watkins especially, he was in the doghouse it, two years ago. He missed, let's see, the 2022 season because of academics, I believe. 2021, he averaged like 7.4 yards per carry, and he was the better running back between uh, Watkins and Daenerick Prince, who is still on the Kansas City Chiefs roster, uh, I believe practice squad, but, you know, vying for a spot, uh, you know, on that great Kansas City Chiefs offense. And so uh, Watkins was a guy who I thought would be unquestionably uh, the number one option at running back. And for whatever reason, he seemed to sort of be in the doghouse. And I don't know exactly what that was to start the year, but he was not the starter. He was kind of getting third team reps, but then it became, uh, it was hit and miss, uh, you know, against Northern Illinois, uh, which was early in the year, a good win for them on the road. They really leaned on him, but it was those final four games where I think, you know, he, he picked up more than 400 yards rushing in those final four games uh, where you really started to see him, I think, understand what Kevin Wilson wanted of him. Uh, and showcase some of that talent. This, you know, he was recruited initially by Missouri and transferred into Tulsa uh, after being in Columbia for a year or two. And he's got the size and speed that you want. Like he, he's a big back or, you know, pretty sturdy, but certainly a guy who can break away. And so to me, he's the most talented guy in the room. And if his head is screwed on straight, uh, he can give you some really good running back play nearly a thousand yards last year, even though, you know, his playing time was hit and miss. But I really like Jackson as well. As a nice compliment, a little bit smaller back, but a guy who hits the hole fast and a couple of times in the spring showcase uh, got loose. Uh, did fumble once. You never want to see that. But, you know, I, I, I like that combo. Uh, and if you're just talking position groups, that is probably one of the stronger ones. And one of the guys that they have Taj Gary as well, uh, who transferred in, I believe, from Virginia Tech years ago. 
but there was a guy who really popped, uh, Ellison, uh, Viren Ellison Jr., I believe, out of Louisville, Texas, true freshman who came in early. Uh, and he he's probably the guy with maybe even more juice than, than Watkins. A slippery guy, uh, good speed and burst, uh, showed on a screen pass a time or two, and then also going through the hole. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if Ellison Jr. Uh, makes – uh, his name known and uh, his presence felt early on here. And they, they bring in some good running backs in the freshman class, but I, he certainly got my attention in spring. What kind of split do you think we kind of see from this team in 2024? If, if you're talking about Ellison Jr. maybe popping on last year, the, the backfield was pretty much dominated by Watkins, even though he kind of came on late. He had about a hundred more attempts than uh, second leading rusher, Bill Jackson. Yeah. I think it'll be pretty close to that, where Watkins is kind of clearly the number one option, but Jackson sees plenty of time as well. And then what's left, depending upon how it goes, you know, and that's not just with Ellison Jr., but any of those freshmen who come in, uh, if they prove themselves capable, you know, they're able to pass protect, obviously, for one, but uh, then prove themselves capable of carrying out a role. Uh, I could see it expanding for any of those guys. Uh, Cause I just, Kevin Wilson is a guy who's going to play the best. Um, you know, the previous head coach, Phil Montgomery seemed like a guy, a head coach who tended to be more loyal. Uh, and he had his guys that he loved. I mean, he kind of loved all of his players, but if you had put in the time for him, he was going to give you every last opportunity uh, to prove yourself on Saturdays. Kevin Wilson, to me, just like we saw with, you know, playing four quarterbacks last year, that wasn't all because of injury. Uh, and, you know, Jack, uh, Watkins starting as the third string guy and then becoming the guy who nearly runs for a thousand yards, he'll change it, uh, you know, really quickly. And and being a first year coach is, is part of that, too. He wasn't beholden necessarily uh, to anybody that was on the roster. It was kind of a prove it to me thing. And I, I think um, if some of those talented freshmen are able to prove it to him, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he went their direction, you know, relatively heavily. And, and you mentioned Anthony Watkins was close to being a thousand yard rusher. He was only 111 yards shy of that in 2023, coming off of a slow start. Do you think we see a thousand yard rusher out of Tulsa this year? Yeah, I think so. I think if Watkins is healthy, I, he certainly seems like a guy who should be able to run for a thousand yards, considering how much Kevin Wilson will look to establish the run. Um, and, you know, the offensive line obviously has some questions, but. That's not too high a bar uh, for a guy who two years ago, three years ago, averaged 7.4 yards per carry and just last year, you know, nearly 900 yards rushing. If Watkins is healthy, I think he's a thousand yard guy. Uh, and if Watkins isn't and Jackson gets the bulk of the carries for most of the year, that's a guy who I could see squeezing out, you know, roughly a thousand. I, 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 with a Kevin Wilson offense, they're going to run a lot of plays and they're going to commit to the run each and every week as much as they possibly can until you absolutely prove that you can stop it. And so, yeah, I, I would expect a thousand yard rusher most seasons uh, if Kevin Wilson's the guy calling the plays. Moving over to the passing game, Tulsa saw their three of their top four receivers from 2023 enter the transfer portal. However, they do return the leading receiver in Camden Benjamin and his 47 receptions for 727 yards and a team leading six touchdowns. How did the wide receivers look in the spring? You know, it was tough to say. I, there were, I think, two open practice viewings for me. Not everybody was healthy. Um, one thing you would certainly say is that uh, transfer from UTEP, Jeremiah Ballard, is is going to be a guy that they're relying on. Um, you know, is certainly a guy who you could see as sort of the number one big body receiver option. Um, six foot three, good body control, just a polished receiver who I think uh, the numbers were pretty good at UTEP last year, right? Like six or 700 yards, something like that. So a guy who at a comparable level um, has been relied upon. And they, uh, like, I, I think he's just a plug and play guy. You can expect Jeremiah Ballard to be competing for, you know, top receiver status. Uh, and then the same goes for Cam Benjamin, who uh, he really seemed to be on the same page with Kirk Francis late in the season and cooked uh, that two lane secondary, which was, uh, one of the best in the American um, repeatedly. I, he was really good down the stretch, and he's a guy who I think they have a lot of like slot receiver types, you know. And some of these guys maybe they're going to play at other positions, but like Zion Steptoe, who comes in from Purdue, he may be able to able to play one of those other receiver positions. But he's got the builds, the look of of a slot guy. And then Braylon Presley, who was a former Gatorade Oklahoma Player of the Year at Bixby, which is kind of a, a rolling high school power here. 
uh, in the Tulsa area right now, a uh, guy who started his career at Oklahoma State, now is transferred to OSU. He's a little bitty guy, but we've seen how dynamic he can be. And when it clicks for him, uh, people expect big things from him, but he's definitely a slot kind of guy. Grayson Tempest, another local kid who came from Union. Uh, they've got a lot of slot guys, but without question, Cam Benjamin is number one in that group. And, and that showed in what I was able to see in the spring as well. He's just, he's polished. Um, the footwork is great. The way he runs his routes to me, really, really good. The hands are good. He's proven it, you know, against a team as tough and physical as Tulane. Like he's a, I, Ballard and Benjamin are where you start and you feel pretty good about receiver. If either of those guys get hurt, I think the whole thing looks very different. But then they've got, you know, some other guys who are intriguing. I, I don't think there's a – I talked about that uh, 2024 recruiting class, which was as good as maybe TU has ever brought in. And the position they recruited the very best was wide receiver, where you have five guys who were recruited by other comparable schools or even bigger. The guy who popped in the spring comes from, I believe, Illinois, Corey Smith. He's 6'1", 170. Made a couple of plays in that spring showcase. I think really was kind of running with the starters at that time. You know, I don't know if that's indicative of exactly where it's going to be come August, uh, but he certainly showed you some things. But then Joshua Smith, Alex Green, Joseph Williams, Jacob Emmers, all of those guys uh, were relatively highly recruited. And so it, TU's got a lot of bodies, and they really just need one or two of those guys to pop. I, I think one or two of the freshmen definitely will make an impact. I think that Cam Benjamin and Jeremiah Ballard are guys you can, I think, rely on. Like they'll be one, two in some order, in my opinion. Zion's step toe I haven't seen enough of, but coming from Purdue, uh, you know, it's certainly uh, if he was good enough to be recruited by a Big Ten school, you assume that he's got the talent um, to make an impact if he's able to get up to speed. Uh, and then some of those other guys, um, Braylon Presley, Grayson Tempest, both made plays in, in the spring showcase. And so, um, I, you know, it's not a position that you feel is like absolutely a strength, but it is one that I'm a little bit bullish on. I, I think that things will develop, I, you know, especially with Kevin Wilson calling the plays. I think receiver uh, will end up being better than it was a year ago. Some of those guys who went out the door and ended up at pretty good places, North Texas or Marshall, um, you know, they were good ball players, but I think that this group on the whole should be even better uh, than what they had last year. Should definitely be better than what they had last year. In one of those uh, true freshmen, I'm kind of curious to hear more about Alex Green. Um, 2023, he had 102 receptions for 2,058 yards and 19 wow. touchdowns for Hudo wow. and Hudo, Texas. Like, wow. Yeah. No, and that's the thing, uh, you know. TU landed more kids, and not that uh, Green falls into this, but T landed more kids in the Dallas Morning News Top 100 than any school in the country. They really did a fantastic job recruiting the state of Texas. And it, look, when you're playing at that level and putting up numbers like that, he's a speedster. You put on the tape and you love what you see. Uh, because of the size, I never expect a kid like that to pop right away. But it's possible. And like I said, I, I think one or two of these freshmen will be relied upon heavily and will kind of make himself a bit of a star as soon as this year. That just wouldn't surprise me. I, I think the opportunity is there. And then I think in in total, the talent is there. I, I Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on the receiver position for TU um, until proven otherwise. I don't mind admitting when I'm wrong, but I like what I saw in the spring. Tulsa returns tight end Luke McGarry. Um, if you were to describe the tight end usage for this offense to somebody who's never caught a game, how would you describe it? Well, it's going to go up. Um, I, Kevin Wilson loves McGarry and said that from almost the first time he laid eyes on him uh, last year. He, uh, My understanding is in the weight room, he is an animal and came in as a freshman um, and, you know, beat the totals of, of a lot of guys that were older than him. He, it, he goes, I think, 6'3", 250 roughly and caught three touchdowns last year. Um, you know, the offense never could get out of second gear for a good part of the season. That hurts tight end play. But I, I see it as a position that's ascending. No doubt those guys got more looks uh, from Kirk Francis in the two practice viewings I saw this spring uh, than what they did last year. And it, it wasn't just McGarry or Ethan Hall, who's a senior and has been around and played some. 
uh, you know, in the Philip Montgomery offense, what he did almost looked as much like fullback as tight end. But uh, he's a guy who, as a blocker, um, he's a bit of an animal. And but he he'll surprise you with his ability to catch passes, certain routes. He he's not McGarry, he's not polished in that way, not as long. Uh, but he's a guy who can get the job done. Connor Vaughn uh, is a guy who I don't remember hearing his name at all last year, and he popped a couple of times to me in the spring with passes downfield. Francis was able to hit him. Uh, so there's another kid, I believe, from the Dallas area, 6'3", 250-ish. You know, and that doesn't even get to Jackson Ford, who might have been um, as good as they brought in. Um, at, it's certainly at the tight end position, but I mean for the entire class. A uh, kid who won a state championship there in the state of Texas and was recruited by some bigger schools as well. So they've got, I think, a lot to work with at, at the tight end position. Uh, I think that it's an ascending position for TU, one that Kevin Wilson feels really good about the position, but that does all start with Luke McGarry, who I think is is certainly poised to break out and do a whole lot more than what he did one year ago as a, uh, one year ago as a true freshman. Moving over to the offensive line, they lose five offensive linemen to graduation. Those five guys made up about 61% of the snaps taken in 2023. They also lost Jeremy Jones over to Marshall. They bring back uh, some left side of the line in Ray Burnett and Walter Youngbear, and also right guard Tawatau Leo Marks. How will they look to fill those losses they had along the offensive line? Yeah, tackles, a uh, big question, maybe as big a question as there is on this team. They do like what's inside as long as those guys all stay healthy, Young Bear, Burnett, and Marks. Uh, they all looked pretty solid to me in the spring. And I, generally speaking, just, you know, I am no expert in offensive line play. Don't mind admitting that. So what I'm looking for is just sort of generally, uh, you know, are you able to come off the ball and move it forward some in the running game? Are you able to keep the quarterback relatively clean? And there was enough of that in the spring for me to feel like, okay, this isn't necessarily going to be a disaster. That said, there is still a lot of work to do. And I think the tackle position um, is interesting. Uh, they were starting, and you know, I don't know if he's sort of the starter going into August. I assume all of these guys are going to have to you know, work this out. But a kid by the name of Caden Stanton uh, from a town – called Beggs, which is here in what we call green country, basically the Tulsa area, I believe started his career at New Mexico State. It's now transferred back. So one year in college, still a redshirt freshman, uh, and he was taking just about all the first team reps that I saw in the two spring practices, uh, you know, and that would have been uh, at right tackle. Um, so he's he's in the mix, and, I, you know, I don't know enough, you know, to, you know, other than he was a local kid that, was a big body guy, you know, and we knew that he was going to New Mexico state and thought of him as about that level of guy. Um, maybe he's ready to blossom and, and be what Tulsa needs at right tackle. Uh, Bennett Ringleb is a kid, another local kid uh, from union high school, which is a power here. And he was getting the first team reps at left tackle. And then there, you know, a couple other guys who were in the mix, Jacob Waller and Jack Tanner. Um, I think tackle is certainly a concern. That's not to say that Kevin Wilson doesn't have a plan, not to say that coach Fry, uh, isn't able to coach these guys up and turn them into a pretty good unit uh, by the time the season starts. But it's not ideal. It's not optimal um, when you've got the two positions that, you know, are most important in, in terms of keeping a quarterback clean, um, relying on guys that young and that inexperienced. So we'll see, you know, they'll throw it into a bag. I think Kevin Wilson coaches offensive line about as good as anybody. Um, you know, he took some some part some guys that had never produced last year. Daryl Simpson ended up being a guy who, you know, gets invited to an NFL camp. So I have a lot of faith in Kevin Wilson's ability to to coach offensive line, even though that's not his position exactly, but he's got a hand in it. And wouldn't be surprised if if any of these guys step forward, but I they do feel good about what's up front there at the two guard positions in center. Who is it that you think is going to step up into that center position? Is that Marks or yeah, I think Marks seems like the guy to me. Um took just about every first team rep I saw. And really, I, I thought he's, like, again, not an expert in offensive line play, but seemed to be a guy who held the point of attack uh, pretty well, not just in the scrimmage action, but when they were doing kind of one-on-one -on -one pass rush stuff, uh, he was a guy who wasn't beaten very much at all. So I, I, I do think Marks is probably the guy at center, and they feel pretty good about him. All right, Caden, if you had to pick a offensive player to have a breakout type season in 2024, who would that be? Well, um, Jeremiah Ballard uh, 
for sure, uh, simply because he's new here. Now, maybe that doesn't count because of what he did at UTEP, but I do think he's going to be, if I had to guess, who's going to be the leading receiver at the end of the year, I'd say Jeremiah Ballard. Uh, because he wasn't here last year, I'd say that probably qualifies. Uh, Luke McGarry, if you're talking about a homegrown guy, um, the hype for him is huge. It was huge last year, and he did catch three touchdown passes, but I think they're just going to find a way to get it in his hands quite a bit, so I could see him being – uh, a breakout guy. And if you're talking about a freshman, Corey Smith, who, you know, looked pretty good in the spring at wide receiver uh, or Byron Ellison. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, I like what I saw from Byron Ellison. Granted, it's a long year. Uh, you know, he, he was an early enrollee who impressed, you know, in his first couple of months, or at least on a couple of Saturdays where I got to watch. So there's a lot that has to be done, but uh, at the running back position, you can usually see it. You know, even if you're a bit of a layman, you can tell when a guy's got juice, that, that other guys just don't have. Um, and I think he does have something that's a little special in that running back room.